So while I'm sharing the screen, um, the demo is around uh, a new capability that we uh, uh, released with the April release of, of uh, Beam PowerShell, and that's uh, around uh, doing page transformation for publishing pages. So for folks who have been in these meetings before, uh, you might have heard about the page transformation technology that we have, where we uh, essentially allow you to take a wiki or web art page and generate a modern client side page from that particular page. Uh, there was a high demand for having this for publishing pages as well. And, um, well, here it is, meaning it, it is in preview. It is available uh, in the April release. Uh, so if you download the PV PowerShell April release, you can use it. Or if you pull down the .NET packages, you can use it as well uh, directly in .NET uh, uh, if you kind of want to extend around it, etc. Now, I only have one slide, and that's actually this one. One address to remember, and that's ak.ms slash spp dash page transformation. So in this uh, your, this link brings you to docs.com with all documentation around page transformation. The docs on the publishing support are maybe a little bit light, but uh, we're working on a webcast series, uh, having I think, eight uh, videos showing like uh, how to do page transformation, different aspects, different options, etc. So rest assured, more documentation is coming. Now, let's close the slides and do a demo. What I have here is um, a basic classic publishing portal. Um, and the, a couple of pages. So let's first go to this D95 uh, specs page. I'm going to show you guys two pages to be transformed. Um, one using an out-of-the-box layout, like a very basic, simple one and then a slightly more complex one, just to show you the, the options. And before someone makes a comment, I'm not a designer, I'm not good at making fancy pages, so this is just a demo page that maybe doesn't look really nice, but I think, I hope you can get the, the idea behind. This is a, a classic publishing page um, with some uh, properties, so page image, some uh, rich text content, uh, a byline, article date, uh, what else do we have? Some formatted text, a table, and then a roll-up image. Now, how does this look like a model page when we convert it? So for that, we need a PMP PowerShell. Let's make it a little bit bigger. And let's sign in to our PowerShell session. So I'm going to sign in to my page transformation demo portal. I use the SQL management shell option. Um, because that's an option to authenticate that kind of works in all situations. Uh, so um, if you have two-factor authentication, for example, this one works nicely. Not correctly. Like this. All right, done. Now let's convert this first page. And to convert a classic page into a modern page, there's one command to remember. That's convert to dash PNP client side page. This same commandlet works for both wiki and web art pages, but also for publishing pages. When you do a publishing page transformation, you have to specify this minus publishing page parameter. And you have to specify a target web URL. Why? Um, because publishing page transformation always goes to a new site collection. So we don't uh, support you having like modern pages mixed together with classic publishing pages in the same site collection. That doesn't work. That's not supported, so we can't do that. However, when you specify target web URL, uh, pointing to, in this case, a communication site, uh, your uh, modern version of the publishing page will end up over there. So this all looks good. So let's give it a try. Actually, just let me open up my target one real quick. So this is my target site collection where the page will be created. Going to pages. It should be empty, and yes, it is. So, all right, let's go. Keeping fingers crossed. While this one is running, um, it will um, create the page in the another site collection which also implies kind of made, you might, the question might pop up like what about assets? Meaning my page has images like you saw in my demo. What do you do with those images? Now, these images are copied over to the target page. So if you go to the target page, you already see this page being created over here. And 
before we look at the page, let's go to site contents. Uh, go to site assets. So you see that we are creating a site pages folder and that in here we have um, images. So the transformation tag actually does copy the images that are needed uh, to make the page work. Let's go back to site pages, uh, site as, uh, pages over here. And let's have a look at our page. So the page transformation is done. Opening up the page. And voila, this is our modern publishing page. So uh, what you see is that we've taken over the header. Uh, the content is there. Uh, like, looks pretty nice. It's a basic page. Let's kind of uh, make it slightly more complex. Let's go back to our. Uh, so, so I, uh, as a quick question. So, if you, yeah. So, if you edit this page, will it keep all the formatting, or how is that? Sure, sure, how how sure. does that work? So, if you edit the page, it's a modern page, meaning it's you can then play around, change the header if you want. Uh, I want a plain header or an image header. It's like a, a classic. Uh, <laughs> it's a, a classic modern page. That sounds weird, but it's a modern page that you can just start editing uh, and then publish once you're ready. So. If that answers the question, Michael. Yes. All right. Awesome. Now, of course, no one makes publishing pages using a default page layout without a custom master page. So this was a very simple demo. Now, what if we have a slightly more complex page? So if I go back to my uh, pages library, and let's open up D88, another drone. Now, this page. Still doesn't look pretty, but it is a modern, it is a publishing page. Uh, it has a bit more content in it. So let's put this in edit mode. First of all, um, what you see here is that this page has an built, it's a custom page layout. Um, the custom page layout has a fixed web part. So folks tend to kind of put a web part inside a page layout and then it, it appears on all the pages based upon that page layout. So that's what we have here. And furthermore, it has a web part zone. So if I actually pull up the page layout file, scrolling down a little bit, you see here that we have a web part zone in the page layout and we have a fixed content editor web part in there which contains some um, HTML pointing to some images, etc. So what you see on the page over here, if you go back, is actually, the, this is the content editor uh, HTML, which is embedded in the page layout. The web part zone has one web part on it, and then we have the usual page content, so the rich text page content, the page image, uh, and some properties. And furthermore, we have, if I go to uh, the page properties here, there is also some... Uh, additional metadata. So we have a contact and we have some, if you scroll down, I think we have some, uh, we have some summary links. So all of this is defined as part of the classic publishing page. Now how do you move this over to a model page? You can imagine that it's quite hard to automatically figure out where to put what, etc. So that's why um, we have introduced the concept of a page layout mapping which is example over here. Now, why was there no page load mapping in the previous uh, page? Because there was an out-of-the-box page. So we have a built-in page load mappings for any out-of-the-box page layout. But if you have a custom page layout, we try to do like a best effort. We generate the page layout on the fly and use that. Uh, but that gives you like a, a single column, everything in there, boom, dumped into one big column. Now, if you want to have a bit more fancy, you can... Um, uh, generate a page layout yourself. So actually, there is like uh, this uh, export slash PNP uh, client side page mapping. You just specify built in page layout, oops, sorry, custom page layout mapping. Hit enter and it will analyze all the page layouts in your uh, publishing portal and generate an XML file like this kind of. Now, I did some cleanup in this one because uh, I want to show you some key things here. First of all, uh, the header. You can control how the header is built. So here we say like a uh, publishing roll-up image goes to the header image uh, server health of URL. Um, the article byline field of the publishing page 
goes to the topic header of the modern header, etc. So you can control that. You can control metadata. So in this case, the, the taxonomy field called drone category, which I will copy to drone types. Um, sorry. Uh, what else? We have content yeah, on the page. And Sorry. he has some custom, custom functions there as well, I see, with to author and to image URL. Uh, yes, so the functions kind of, refer, kind of rewrite the text a little bit. Like um, in this case, to image URL, when you get uh, a publishing page image field, is an image tag. But uh, we need only the image URL, so we kind of strip away the other stuff using this custom function. And this is all extendable, you can write your own functions, etc. But that goes way too far for this uh, quick demo. Um, but you can kind of control um, the visual content. What will be a web part? So remember the publishing page is metadata and visual content. Now with the classic page, is all, these are all fields. In a modern page, uh, you have to kind of think about what will be on the page and what will be metadata. So this will be the, the content on the page. So an, an image, uh, rich text content, and uh, some links. We have a web part a zone. So we, we tell where the zone lives, row three, column one, and then we have this fixed web part, which is in there as well. So this all together um, drives the page transformation for the for this more advanced page. So let's see how that uh, works. So let's move this away. Let's, I'm gonna copy a command line uh, real quick. Let's do that here, just a sec. Paste. So the same convert to the client side command. Uh, different now is that we have this page start mapping where we point to our custom mapping that we created. Uh, for the rest, it's kind of the same. So when you hit enter right now, uh, we'll do the conversion of um, this D88 page into our target site collection. So I'm going to cancel this one here. Let's. Close this one, let's go over here. You see the page already being created. It might not yet be fully finished. No, it's still busy, but typically it's already good to have a look at. So let's well, let's wait a second more. Okay, let's see. Let's open up the page. And here we have our D88 modern version of the page. Again, you see the, the same pretty cool header, uh, so the page follow-up image becomes the header image, uh, byline, etc. is taken over as being the, the tag here. We have our rich content, that all looks good. We have our uh, quick links, so let's put this in edit mode so you can see it slightly better. Remember that uh, we had those summary links? Those summary links are converted into quick links. Now, by default, we take this uh, list view, but if you put this, for example, in a film strip view, but it looks better, right? So nice image links. Im these images are also kind of converted to the other side, to the new site collection. Here we have the embedded content in the page layout. It's now actual content on the page. And finally, we have our um, list view web part. So, so is there some documentation that tells you what's supported the features in the old publishing with, and what they will be translated to in the modern pages? Uh, yes, there is. If you go to this wiki.ms uh, link, it's repeat the page transformation. And there is this, um, let me see, page transformation, classic web after modern mapping. This is the one which explains which classic web parts that we have, what will be the modern equivalent, some comments, and whether cross-site is supported. So not everything works in a cross-site mode, and there's sometimes there are some restrictions. So that's all documented here. Um, and there's also this uh, PowerShell page showing how to use this from PowerShell, like I'm doing right now, from .NET, yeah. if you want, etc. So there's a lot of documentation there, and there will be like a video series um, on this as well uh, in the upcoming days. Yeah, and if someone is missing a uh, out of the box old web part, which we should translate into new web part, feel free to log an issue uh, on, the, on that over on the PMP site, and we look into it. Or if you want to contribute yourself, you can. Yeah, absolutely, do that. absolutely. We would love. To. Actually, I would like to call out. Can you, 
please give this a try. Uh, this is the first time that we have publishing support. It's in preview. Um, I would uh, we have we have done testing, of course, but uh, we don't have like a real life portal. So if you have real life portals, um, just give it a try. Let us know how it works. Uh, create your mapping files and, and play around and and see uh, and give us feedback. This is open source, so the feedback uh, there is this. Uh, uh, if you go to the GitHub Shepherd organization. We have this uh, our modernization repository. So, where, so where should people log issues for the yep. page trans transformation? Should they log in in the PowerShell repo or in the transformation repo, or just in general? Preferably in the transformation repository. So, this SPDF modernization contains all the uh, tools and guidance and, and around modernization, including page transformation. So. Please create it in the issue list over here uh, so that uh, we can track it. If it's in PowerShell, meaning we'll pick it up as well, but I think this is the best place to put the issue. Awesome, awesome work. So looking at the questions, I see Thomas uh, asking what about custom web parts. Meaning, uh, yes, you, you can use a custom web part mapping file as well. Uh, there's no time to demo it today, but uh, you can specify your own web part mapping file where you can kind of say, like, I have uh, this old web part which goes to my custom built SharePoint framework web part. So it's fully extendable and, and you can tweak it and tailor it to, to fit your needs. But I hope it gives, this gave you like a, a kind of a, a small teaser to, and I hope you, you guys want to try it out and provide feedback. And maybe we should add a blocker so if someone uses old script uh, web part, they cannot map it to the, to the <laughs> modern, modern script that door, but that's not allowed. Not, well, yeah, this is. Or, or we could log, we could log a warning at least, right? Uh, that, that'd be fun. Yeah. I always saw that, uh, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks, Mikael. I think back to you. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. That was awesome stuff. Um, I think this will actually be useful. So I used it a little bit myself for wiki pages, and I, I, I have a client right now where we actually do modern pages side by side with um, publishing pages. I know it's not supported, but we're actually doing it, and this will actually help moving those last pages over to the site pages library, and then we can kill off the pages library or maybe create a new site.